Hi, my name is Dave from Angle Active in Dunfermline, and today I'm going to show you how to tie a basic railing bug uh, which can be used throughout the season. Um, firstly, we'll start off with the hook, which is a, a jig hook, size 16. Uh, I use full and mill, you can use various other uh, types of hooks, uh, fastener, and so on. On the hook itself, you'll find a bead. I'm using at the moment a 3.3mm bead, which gives me the weight. Uh, I need to take that hook down where I want it with a fish are. Colour preference for the beads themselves, I would say whatever colour suits your needs. But I like a sort of gold colour for this particular fly. So first up, once we set it in the vise where we want it, we want to put thread on, nice easy turns, make sure they lock that bead down. Normally, what I would do is possibly use a little bit of super glue just in the back of the bead head uh, to keep the bead steady, stop the bead from sliding around when you're tying. So, once I've run my thread on, what I'll use is a synthetic coil. You can use a normal coil, uh, die to your preference. So, using a synthetic coil such as this. Is the right tape and the right size for what you want. First thing to go on though will be the tail, and for that I'm just using your standard piece of hackle. You can use various forms of hackle. For this, I just want a nice, a nice piece of mottled. Hackle, any kind of hackle would do, black, whatever you prefer. In this case, I'm just using a piece of a Cree or something similar to that for the tail. It's important to get your tail length right. So by placing it over the hook first before you bind it in and just lock it in with a couple of turns first and see where that tail sits. You can manoeuvre it about whilst you're doing that, just to make sure you've got the right length. So, that suits me just there. So I'll lock it down with another turn. And I'll use the back of my scissors here and take off the excess. Push the bead forward again. Always make sure that bead sits at the front. The next piece to go on will be the synthetic quill. I usually tie that fully on and usually put an angled cut. I don't know if you can see that. There isn't actually an angled cut in that. You can angle that to whatever you prefer. So once you lock that into position, the angled cut allows you to turn it much easier onto the fly shank. So I'll wind my thread back up to the back of the head and what I'll do here is I'll start to build the thread up slowly but surely, back and forward, giving myself a more tapered body. And this taper is quite unique in the sense that you can build it up as far as you want it, as thin as you want it and it gives you a whole new dimension to the shape of the fly. So winding it back down, I'll lock in the synthetic quill. As I go back the shank, you'll see the quill slightly start to turn out the way at a sort of 15 to 20 degree angle. I'm going to bring it round the corner of the shank, just down onto the back of the bend so that the tail sticks down the way. Another turn yet, and there we are. So that's about right where you want to be. Again, winding thread back up the body, and then creating more space at the top of that back of the neck, the back of the collar of the bead. Is where you want that shape to form. So using as much thread as you need, give yourself a nice cone shape I'd say to this. Doesn't have to be perfect but you're always better to have a good eye 
on it at all times to make sure that shape is forming. As you can see there, as I wind it back the thread, you'll find yourself going back to the base again and then bringing the cone back up again. And you can do this a multitude of times to get the shape you need as and when you want to form the shape completely. So that there I would say is about roughly where I want to be. I'll go back down the shank and at this point you'd maybe want to tie in uh, a wire of, of your choice. You could use gold, silver, orange, whatever you like, suiting the colour of the fly. With this I'm not going to use a particular wire. I'm just going to use the basic body because it will be coated by a bug bond just shortly. I'm coming back up to roughly where I feel the quill should stop. Okay. Next point, take my quill and pulling it back towards itself and down. Nice and tight. And you just overlap it. If you want it to look like it's meant to look, I tend to lap the first one and then match the second one in so you get that nice striped effect off the quill. Because it's synthetic it really stands out much more than a normal standard everyday quill would. Gives you a nice segmented body. So again once I've got that up to the neck there, make sure I've got the alignment right. So you want that colour all the way up. There we go. Lock it in. I'll then take that piece and lock that off. I'm not worried too much about the collar because the collar a point is a locking point for everything in this fly. Two or three turns at the top. I'll then trim off the excess. That's the cold part finished with. The next thing I'll do here is I'll bind up the body or the collar of the fly to suit. I'm not too fussed. We're making it ideally perfect as long as you get the material trapped underneath it. You don't want to make a great big collar. There's a reason for this collar to be where it is. And I'll show you that in just a second. So, I want to level off to the back of the actual bead that holds the bead exactly where it should. Now that I've done that, I'll use my whip finish tool to lock that off now. Because this is a UTC thread, you can spin it or unspin it and widen the thread or narrow the thread as you see fit, which helps when you want to put dubbing on a collar. In this case, I just want it to go nice and flush and flat. So I've tied that in and just put it down, nice wee tight lock off point now. And then I'll just trim that off nice and neat to the actual fly. Like so. So now that I've done that, my next venture is going to be using an aluminous golf product, which again you can use on most subjects like this to give you that vibrant hot spot. So what I'm doing here is, is I'll tilt it up so I can see the, the fly point where I want this aluminous resin to go. And I'll use the tip of the double needle to give me a small amount of it. I'll then dab that onto the very side of the fly. Not masses of it. So if you can rotate the double needle 
as you apply it then you won't apply too much which is very easy to do I'll just take a swipe at the side of the bead so if I turn that round now you'll see roughly where that liquid is now lying it still is in liquid form so again I'll do the other side now same idea roughly parallel to one another spot green nymph and if I turn that back you'll see the way that you can use it up onto the bead itself is getting the shape of it right the colour right once you've got that there you've got it right you're happy enough you can then use your UV torch just to set that so I'm just set that where it is Give it a few seconds, rotate it on the other side, give that a few seconds. And for the purpose of this fly, once I've set it, I like to make sure it's really set before I apply anything else. So that should be set enough for me now to just apply a thin or clear varnish. Same idea as probably you've seen before. Um, you can apply this straight to the actual subject. You would work that round with your double noses as required and onto the head itself. I tend to coat everything right the way around. Make sure they touch that tail. You want a glassy bead effect. That's what you're trying to achieve with it. Should you need any more, you can always put a little dab on your dab and needle. Like so. And then rotate your fly to where you want it. And build it on as you go. Again, what you're trying to achieve here is locking all these colours in but making the body look like it's one complete item like it's locked in there and it just it makes the fly stand out so much more to the eye and for the fish's point of view you've got that trigger point there to help things as they are so fairly happy with that, I tend to rotate it, the vise, <coughs> sometimes it lets the sediment settle back and forward until you hit it with the UV torch. So I'm hitting that with the UV torch now along the back of it and allowing it to stay upside down means that any resin build up will go along the back of the, the fly. So again, I'm holding the torch where it is, I'll just rotate it nice and slow all the way around. You can see that colour really standing out, really nice bright green against that olive. Again, just work your way back and forward, move it up a few times just to make sure that that's really going to take the, the UV light and set. So this is what I call a olive hotspot grilling bug. And that's the finished article.